everybody. Thanks for tuning in to us. I'm so glad that you have stopped and took your time. You've scrolled the internet or you've actually looked us up. However you got here, I'm just glad you're here. We've got one of our services, one of our words that we have given, one of our songs uh, we've put out here, and now we're together. The reason we do this is because we feel the Lord has put messages on our hearts, words on our hearts that we can help you. But the main thing is to glorify Him. So thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. I, I promise, uh, don't just start and stop. Sometimes you got to catch up to me. you got to catch up to uh, everything. But if you'll put the time in, I think you'll find that God's got a word for you. Now, we'll be back in just a few minutes with some other things. And, and so just sit down, hold on, and let God bless you. Let's everyone stand with me for the reading of God's word. Let it rain in this place this morning. Verse number 11 of chapter 33. And the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaketh to his friend. And he turned again into the camp. And the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friends. Amen. I want to preach this morning on a very simple thought. I actually preached part of this at a funeral this week. Yes, this was a funeral message. I preached this at a funeral message. I want to preach on listen to God. Amen. Or let God talk to you. Listen to God. Amen. We normally talk to God when we're in trouble. I told the group in there at Brown's Funeral Home this week, looking across there, spanning across there, knowing that I had quite a few people in there that were not average churchgoers. Some may not even have called themselves Christians. But I made this statement. We talk to God even when we don't know we talk to God. We talk to God the majority of time when we're in trouble. We start talking to God then. Amen. You let sickness come. You let pain come. You let tragedy come. You let uh, undecision come. You let things happen in your life. You got to talk to somebody. Sometimes when the troubles get so bad, there ain't no one else to turn to. Amen. I heard Hennis Fox, preacher, mentor of mine, been gone for quite some time. He made this statement. You've heard it too. He was in, he was in the Great War. He was in World War II. And he said that there weren't no atheists in the foxhole. So some of them guys he hung around with said when they were out there playing cards and free time, They'd be swearing, telling dirty jokes, uh, uh, talking about how God doesn't exist. But when the bombs begin to fly and the sky lit up and the blood began to flow, they would cry out to God. They would cry out to God. In fact, Brother Hennis said he saw some of them boys that was just so degenerate when they were out of the foxhole that when they were in the foxhole, they'd reach out to God to the point where they would even speak in tongues. When we get in trouble, we talk to God. Amen. When things get rough, my my cousin Pam this week, and we've been praying for Pam. Would you say say a special prayer for Pam? She's fighting uh, uh, the C word. Um, And um, this week, uh, my phone rang at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's it's, It's what inspired this message. When your phone rings at 2 o'clock in the morning, normally it's somebody on the other end with bad news or they're wanting prayer. When the preacher's phone rings, unless it's some of my friends on the other side of the world, and then I straighten them out, I'm asleep. You call me back when you should be sleeping. (laughs) Amen. But most of the time when I look at the caller ID and I see it's uh, from somebody I know or a 754 number or a local number, um, 
I pick it up, and, and it was mom in this particular case, and she said, please, uh, Pam called, and for Pam to call at 2 o'clock in the morning, she wants someone to pray. And I had actually just been up to go stock the stove, and so I was already up. And um, Rhonda said, where are you going? Because she wanted to know what was going on, and I told her, she said, where are you going? I said, I'm going out in the chair to pray. I'm going to talk to God. And when I sat in the chair, I, I, I was talking to God, and I, my body was sleepy. I was tired. Uh, I, I knew I had to be up in just a couple hours at 5.30 or so. And, and, and my, my fight, there was a fight there, but my mom was going, I know that she is hurting. She's probably hurting so bad that she can't talk to God. So, God, I'm going to talk to you on her behalf. I'm going to pray on her behalf. I, I'm not just going to sit here and fall asleep. I'm, go, I'm going to talk to the Lord. Well, we talk to him when we're in trouble. When you're needing God to help you pass that test, when you're needing God to help you make that payment, when you're needing God to give you a good doctor's report, when you're needing God to help mend that relationship, when you're needing God, amen, you, you start talking to him. Amen. Some of you think you're talking to yourself. No, you're really talking to God. Because you ain't got no power to answer it. You don't have no power to answer yourself. Amen. You can't make hope of it. That's one time that we talk to him is when we're in trouble. And then, then sometimes when we want something. You know, CJ had talked to me a lot when he wants something. All of a sudden, I'm his best friend. He becomes Jabberjaws. Amen. Anybody else got anybody like CJ in your life? Amen. They don't, they don't talk to you until they want something. Now, that ain't really true of CJ. CJ, if anybody knows him, he'll talk anytime. Amen. But when we, we want something, boy, our, our generation has been so uh, oversold on this. We think we can ask God for a box of, uh, you know, pink taffy and then the pink Cadillac to go with it. When we want something. The Lord corrected me this week over this sermon. My life was changed when I learned to pray the prayer of Jabez. Bless thou me, O Lord, keep thy hand upon me. Deliver me from evil and enlarge my borders. And then I added a couple things. Bless my health and my wealth, and give me peace in my house. I pray it every day. My life has been changed. Bless thou me. The concept is you can't help somebody when you ain't blessed. And it did change my life. I've been praying that away for going on probably 10, 12 years now. The prayer of Jabez. Bless thou me, O Lord. It works. Lord corrected me this week because Jesus taught him how to talk. Uh, and I'm going to try to change my daily prayers in the morning. I'm not going to start off with, bless thou me. I'm going to start out with, our Father. Amen. You got to recognize who you're talking to. Amen. When you go to talk to somebody... Okay, I got a whole room full of people. If I was wanting to talk to Mike Marple, I would walk right up to Mike and say, Mike. Amen. I'd talk, go right up to August and say, August. Amen. I would, I would address you. Oh, Lord. I would address you. I say, well, why? Well, first of all, I want to know that I'm talking to you. I'm talking to Mike, and I'm not talking to Roger. I love you too, Roger. Amen. But you see what a, our father, you need to recognize it's a, it's a reverence thing. Hello, in a land that we haven't got any reverence anymore, no respect. I am doing my best to try to teach this pre-teenager how to respect people. And it's so far because he's surrounded by his entire generation that doesn't know how to respect nobody. I do appreciate him and some of the others in our church that learn how to say, yes, ma'am. No, sir. Amen. There is a respect issue when it comes to God. You don't go in there all willy-nilly. 
You recognize my father. I'm talking to you, Lord. I like that old Diddy song. It's not, the, it's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. It's not the deacon, but the preacher, but it's me, oh Lord. I'm talking to you, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven. And then let's put a little praise in it. Before you start uh, asking, how about our hallowed? Hallowed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this, isn't, this, this is just my warm-up. This is not even part of my message. I'm going to give you the flip side here in just a minute. Amen. This is how we need to talk to God. Amen. Listen, church. Amen. Why do you think we got praise and worship so that we can get in the position where we can talk to God and God can talk to us? Amen. I want God to talk to me. Hey, man, I need to talk to God in the right way. I got to do it in your will. Thy will be done. When you come to God, I want, I want, I need, I need. You can say, I want and I need all you want, but until you get in his will, you're praying amiss. That's what the scripture says. Hey, man, you need to pray right. I'll tell CJ, I'm using CJ a lot, but I'll tell anybody, any of my kids, you want something from me, you come the right way. You ask the right way. You do it the right way. You got more of a chance getting it the right way than the wrong way. You don't, wait a minute, you don't demand me. You don't tell me. You don't beg of me. You ask correctly. Put a little praise in it. Put a little love in it. Put a little joy in it. And after you do all that, then you can get into give us this day our daily bread. After you approach God the right way, then you can start saying, Lord, give me a little bit of peanut butter on my bread. Amen. Give me a little jam to go with the peanut butter. <laughs> give me some milk to wash it down and let it work in my body. Can somebody help me preach in this house? Amen. You want God to answer your prayer? Amen. How about if we start showing him some respect? How about if we start praising him? Amen. How about if we come boldly before the throne of grace and make our petitions known? Amen. And get in the will of God. That's good preaching. Amen. But that ain't what I'm preaching on this morning. So we all talk to God. Some of you talk to him correctly. Some of you talk to him from time to time. Some of you just talk to him whenever you just, you have to. Amen. But we talk to God. But when was the last time God talked to you? Hello. When was the last time you knew that the creator of the universe, the savior of your soul, the Redeemer and Resurrected One said, hey, and called you by name. When was the last time you heard from heaven? I didn't hear from man's opinion of heaven or man's opinion of God. When was the last time that the hair on the back of your neck stood up because you knew that Jehovah Nissi had walked into the room, that Jehovah Jireh had provided for you? When was the last time you heard the heavens roar and the thunder sound? When was the last time you heard from God? Amen. I'm going to talk about three ways God talks to us this morning. Three particular ways. The first one may be strange to you, but I'm telling you it's true. God still talks to us in an audible voice. Amen. I will use myself as an example. Amen. There have been a few times in my life, actually probably more than most, I have heard an audible voice. I thought I'd get the strange looks. Amen. But I've heard a voice 
One of the most famous ones was when that young man was born. I was baptizing his mother. And when I was baptizing, I don't care whether you believe me or not. You really don't. Amen. You may go for your whole life and never hear an audible voice. Amen. I'm just telling you, I have. And I got scripture to back it up. And God spake to Moses face to face. He heard him. It wasn't just in his head. Amen. He spoke to him like a friend. And there's some of you in here, if I was to give you some time to testify, you could jump up and you could say you heard an audible voice from time to time. I know it's rare, but he does. One of the times God spoke to me audibly was whenever I was baptizing CJ's mother. We brought her up out of the water and her water broke. So we're rushing to get her to the truck. And as I'm taking her up the hill there at the creek to get in the old truck, I heard a voice. This one is yours. And I turned around to look. And I heard it a second time, reinforced, this one is yours. I didn't have a clue what that meant, but I knew what I'd heard. I didn't understand at the time what it meant. I'm starting to get an idea. But I heard a voice. Amen. There was an old song. I heard a voice and he called my name. Amen. Sometimes you can hear God. Amen. Through all the midst of the world's noise pollution and through all of the devastation of everything, God will call you by name. Amen. Some of you, when you got saved, when God was reaching down to get you, uh, amen, you were so lost that he had to call your name out loud. It's normally us that are most hard-headed that he's got to speak the loudest to. But he does. He speaks. He speaks with a loud voice. Someone said, give me a scripture, preacher. Jesus is getting baptized. There's a voice that comes out of heaven, and the spirit comes in the form of a dove. I can give you a whole lot more than that. I looked up the scripture here this morning. I need to do a little more research as I was looking, re looking up the scripture this morning that I used. And I said, how many times did the Lord spoke to Moses? And I said, then I, heard, I got this page. It said over 2,000 times that the Lord spoke to Moses and his servants in the Old Testament just like he did out of the burning bush. God will speak to you. Some people are looking to see angels. I'd rather hear the voice of God. Moses got so used to hearing the voice of God that one time when he had God, so he was talking back and forth to God. He said, let me see your face. I beseech thee, O Lord, show me thy glory. I believe you can hear from God. That's one way God speaks to you. Amen. Just out of curiosity, not to embarrass anybody. How many in here have ever heard an audible voice? Oh, my. Three quarters. Half. Got their hands going up. Amen. I believe you, you want that? I'm telling you. I remember another certain time. This was years ago. This church was just on the other side. It was still being completed up here. I was, I, I actually wasn't, I was going to Bible college and I came in this, into the basement to pray and I heard the voice of God in the summertime. I saw the Shekinah, I saw the glory. It wasn't on the smoke machine neither like churches make it up. It was a genuine, real, holy mist that came down from the heavens. It was real. Amen. And he called me. Amen. Another way God speaks to us, and this is more common for most of us, he speaks to us through this book. The written word. You know how important the written word is? This is God's love letter to you. You can talk to somebody. A lot of you do it through texting anymore. <laughs> Amen. We text our thoughts back and forth. Amen. And I thought, well, that's terrible. Well, God sent us a big text. It's called the Bible. 
Amen. God tells us and God speaks to us through the written word. This is why it's so important that you have the word of God in your heart that you might not sin against God. This is why you need to be sending your kids to school to learn the scriptures. Amen. I'm, I'm going to say something right here. If you are a born again child of God, you need to be getting the word of God into your heart. You need, if you're a born again child of God, you can get mad at me if you want. You say you want God to talk to you, then open his book. Someone said, where, what? Well, you, we'll let the Spirit lead you in that. Just start reading the book. Well, it's too hard for me, but yet you can read everything else. Are you really telling me, I'm going to get playing with you. Are you really telling me that you are so dumb that you can't understand writing from 400 years ago, 1600 English? Is that what you're saying? I want you to think about that. Take that to the back. Amen. The word of God is not hard. Amen. It's truth. The truth will set you free. I don't know how many times I've needed direction. I needed God to move. Amen. I needed to hear from God. And I opened the book and right there was something God gave to me. Or maybe like I get these messages all the time. I just open the book in my daily devotions and I'm reading. And a word or a phrase or a sentence will jump off of the page and just jump into my heart and jump into my spirit and that's what you hear on Sunday morning or I go witness to somebody. It's the written word. Amen. Give him some praise. God will speak to you. I believe he'll speak to you through his word. Amen. And there's no excuse anymore. I carry my Bible with me everywhere I go now because my phone goes with me everywhere. And I've got the Bible app, and I, I, I go to the scripture. I, I use my phone because of the convenience. I probably read from my phone. I'm reading the word of God more than ever before, and it's because of my phone. Because of the convenience of it being in my pocket all the time, and I go to it. And when I've got when I've got time, many times uh, when I've got time, I'm waiting at a doctor's office or a bus, and I got downtime. It's not downtime. It's time for God to speak to me. Amen. I love my time alone in the woods and mowing and doing all these things. I love to be alone. I put the word on. Even somebody's reading the word to me. God speaks to me through the word, written word, then he'll speak to me through a song, through a hymn. God will speak to me. Yesterday, I was doing a lot of talking at God. Notice how I worded that. It wasn't a two-way relationship. I was talking to God, telling him all about my problems and how I wanted him to fix it and how I wanted him to take care of it and that I didn't appreciate why he was allowing me to go, go through it. And, and that's so I spent hours kind of doing that. Now, listen, I'm a conditioned fellow. So I, I told you I used my phone. So everything, I would say 99% of the music that touches my ears is gospel. That was all different types of gospel, hymns, contemporary, whatever. But it's gospel is what I listen to. When, I, when I'm out alone, when I got the phone, when, I, when I'm working out or whatever, I'm cutting wood, when I've got my earphones in, it's Jimmy Swaggart, it's Kevin Wallace, Perry Stowe, John Hagee, someone preaching. I got 90.1 to point on. I, I, I'm listening to Rich Bruce. And there, so I'm conditioned. I'm just, just out of way. I, I do waste probably some time on the phone, but for the most part, when I'm alone, I'm conditioned. It's good habits. To get, them are good habits to get in. They're habitual. Amen. So when I'm at home, you know, even though I was in a, in a tizzy yesterday talking to God, I was still conditioned. And so I was, God was mellowing me out through the preachers and through the singing. 
And then on the way to town yesterday on the radio, I was listening to Mark Lowry sing a version of that song about Jesus. In the version, I, I'm going to mess it up. I can't get the tune in my head, but it's about run to Jesus, run to Jesus, run to Jesus, and live. How many ever heard that beautiful chorus? And when your time has come, your time has come to go. I don't know all the words. Da, 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 dee, 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 dee. Then fly to Jesus. It's just a simple song. Fly to Jesus. Fly to Jesus and live. Now, it may not mean much to you right now, but when that song come across the radio, I felt my heart. I felt the presence of Jesus. Come. And CJ sat right behind beside me. He's on his head phone doing his thing. We're on the way to practice. But I felt Jesus. I felt the Holy Spirit. And the Lord just said, I love you. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about let God talk to you. And then finally, not only just for a song or hymn, but sometimes he uses a crazy preacher from Shanghai on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night to give you a word. Amen. To teach to you. Uh, a Sunday school teacher that has prepared a lesson to teach you. Amen. I'm going to say this. I said it on my radio program this week. I'm going to say this right now. If you're going to a church, if you're going to get spiritually fed someplace, and you sit through a two-hour service and you haven't heard the name of Jesus, get out of that church. Get out of that church. You mean to tell me I can talk to you about the written word of God and preach to you and not mention Jesus Christ and him crucified, resurrected, lived again? Amen. You just wasted two hours of your life. I don't care whether you like it or not. You want God to talk to you, you need to be in a, a relationship with him. Amen. My brother sent me a song. A new song, I believe it was, did I say Crowder? I think it was a Crowder song. Crowder's got a new song. It's one of them guys. Uh, and my brother sent me a song and said, tell me what you think. I listened to the first verse and catchy. Then I listened to the second verse, catchy. But then I got feared because now I've done listening through two verses of it. I've done invested two minutes, two and a half minutes into this song. And I haven't heard nothing about God. I haven't heard the name of Jesus. And so I was getting ready to put it in, into another file. And believe me, I believe in being, uh, I, I believe that we can talk about Jesus and not necessarily mention his name. I understand that. But see, there were some songs written back in the 80s and the 90s, like, What a Difference You Made in My Life. You know that song was written about Christ? but not one place for that whole song until Ronnie Millsap redone it. Did you know that it was written for Jesus? And then there was a song that won two Grammys that went two years in a row called You Light Up My Light. And all that young girl, that boon girl sang about was that in her heart, it was Jesus. But they made crossovers. Listen. I said, talk to Jesus. So Jesus can talk to you. If your preacher or, his, or teacher is spending time and they're not talking about Jesus or pointing you to Jesus, pointing you to God, then you are wasting your time. You want somebody that is going to speak with the authority of the Holy Spirit and speak to you in the power and in the name of Jesus. That song them kids just sang a little while ago, I speak Jesus. 
Amen. When they got to that part about the power, his name is power. His name is life. That ministered to me. Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled churches where they're preaching the truth. I didn't say they were perfect. We far from perfect. Amen. But I can point you to the one that's perfect. Amen. I ask you this question, and I'm wrapping this thing up. When was the last time God spoke to you? By the grace of God, he's speaking to you right now. Don't shove it under. Don't, don't pull it away. I'm talking about the God of the universe, the creator, the one that gave you the very breath of life that you got, the one that has given you everything that you got, the reason you are sitting here, the reason you are alive, the reason you exist, all the blessings that you have. I'm talking about that one. He wants to talk to you. Someone said, how do you know he does? Because... Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He will not force his way in. You hear the Lord knocking through this old preacher this morning. You hear God trying. And because of your anger, your doubt, your fear, your guilt, whatever it is that Satan has put in your mind to cloud it, cloud your mind this morning, you're not opening the door. I promise you when God is trying to talk to you, he will talk to you till he can't. Someone said, when's that? One thing's for sure is when you die, there ain't no purgatory. When you die, you die how you lived, how a tree falls. I'm going to tell you one thing. At that moment, that's when I want to hear my voice of my Jesus. Say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hey Amen. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen when they die. I don't know about for everybody, but I know for a Christian, to be absent of the body is to be present with Christ. Ha! Huh. The Lord is wanting to talk to you. He's wanting to speak to you. <laughs> you didn't know you're going to get all this this morning. You didn't bargain for all this. You didn't know, but God wants to talk to you because he loves you. God wants to talk to you because he's already bought you. He bought you with his precious blood. You didn't know this this morning, that God was going to take time, amen, out of making the stars twinkle and the sun shining and the moon glowing and the waters flowing. You didn't know that he was going to call you by name this morning, did you? But he is. And how great is that? Hey Amen. Now you can shut the door. You cannot answer the door. But I wish you would open it. I wish you would open it. Like I said, you talk to God. Every one of you talk to God. But how many are letting God talk to you? You talk to God to get what you want to hear what you want, to try to make some sense of it all. But what about when God says, come in and love on me. Come here. Come here. When was the last time you had a Holy Ghost hug? <laughs> wow. Hey, man, I didn't talk about something all dreamed up, schmoozed up. Man, I feel God. I feel God. I feel like I'm his voice this morning. I feel like I'm his trumpet this morning. I feel like that God is using me, amen, to shake the cobwebs out of your life. I feel God to want me to tell you I'm still here. Life is so short. Life is so unpredictable. Oh, do you walk into the doctor's office tomorrow? 
You get to report, you know how much long. You'll cry out then. When you hear that somebody you love is gone, you'll cry out then. But what about right now? When God is just, he's talking to you. He's talking to you. And he's wanting to say to you, one of the things I feel he's wanting to say to you is I love you. God wants a relationship. I told that group in there at Brown's the other day when I got down to the end of that, and I preached it a lot different than when I'm preaching it this morning. But I told them this, I said, what God wants, he don't want religion. He could care less about your Hail Marys. He could care less about this, that, or the other. He wants to talk to you. Say, prove it. Well, the very first man and the very first woman he came down in the cool evening and he talked to them. And they talked back to him. And they walked with him and they talked with him. Every one of us, and he loves you that much. You're an individual. You're. Tessa, God knew it was your birthday. He wants to say happy birthday. Amen. Debbie, God knew. Your birthday, you're having a good one, ain't you? Ah, he knew more than you knew. He always does. God knows you get angry. God knows your faults. God knows everything. He just wants to talk to you. Now, I feel like God is talking to some of you right now. Would you stand with me? Hey, everybody, thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this. And listen, the most important thing about this is if you do not know Jesus, ask him into your heart. Pray that sinner's prayer. If you need to contact me, by all means, please contact me. Uh, if you've got questions, we believe God. Don't matter where you're at in the world, we will make contact back with you. And we appreciate your giving. Uh, this kind of thing does cost a little bit of money. And we're asking for help. You can help us. We've got all the information with our Tively. You can send money through there. Uh, we appreciate your prayers and your response and for just liking us. Spread the news. Tell everybody that you know that Jesus saves and he's coming soon. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.